Hi, everybody. My name is John DePietro. And I'm Bob Zagami with the Camper Report Show. On this Camper Report Show, I am going to go behind the scenes with an industry icon, Bob Tiffin, talking about 50 years of Tiffin quality RVs. How about you, Bob? Well, I'll tell you, Bob Tiffin is one of the nicest people you will ever meet in the RV industry for all of those 50 years. Uh, I've got a unique interview today uh, with Randy Murray, who is the Director of Service Operations for Pete's RV, which is a major player in the Northeast, Pennsylvania, Indiana, uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Vermont. We're going to talk about winterizing. You might think it's not oh, Bob, who wants to talk about winterizing? Oh, we're just talking about the summer. Yeah. Now it's winterizing yeah. season, yeah. but it's so important to know what you're doing when you're winterizing or having someone winterize, isn't it? Well, it's it's even important to say, well, yeah, what about the people in Florida or California? Well, you know, they go on vacation. And if they go on vacation to Montana or North Dakota yep. and they get a snowstorm in April or October, they get, they get another terminology. So yep. it's a good recap on it. Yeah. Well, that's good because you know what? Not winterizing and uh, finding out that you've got a freeze can cost you lots of money. Those yeah. stories, plus all the news of the week from where? Where, where do we get our news? For, oh, RV Business and Woodhouse Campground Magazine. Always there for us. Always there for us. Those stories and more coming up right here. Where? On the Camper Report Show. Stay with us, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Camper Report Show. It's the news segment. And uh, my name is John DePietro. His name is Bob Zagami. And Bob, there's a lot of um, interesting news coming around this week. And one of them is awards for manufacturers that dealers vote for. Talk about that, would you? The quality service uh, awards from the RV deal, the National RV Dealers Association. And it's one of the, uh, I think one of the most important ways that dealers communicate the companies that they trust and want to carry on their lots. And now, lot, right. they rate, they rate the, so the dealers can submit uh, recommendations on various manufacturers that they deal with and they rate them on quality and reliability they rate them on parts and availability warranty service and expense and sales overall the product itself so this is this is the number one measure for a manufacturer on how they are delivering their goods and services to the dealers and the more Train, training there are, the more awards there are, customers look for the uh, the awards. And and a good dealer who yep. uh, who gets them should display them appropriately at their dealership. Right. Now, we're not going to go through every award winner here, but at least some of the ones that we know, one of the ones, some of the groups that we work with, we see Alliance is getting an RV for all three of their brands. We see our friends at Grand Design are getting awards. We're seeing our friend Kevin at Cougar, which is part of the Keystone Group, which is part of Thor, are getting awards. And on the motorized side, we see um, our friends with Winnebago with Class A, B, and C. And I'm sure there are a few other um, motorized products that um, I've well, got out there. Uh, Winnebago has also got Numar in there, yep. Airstream, Airstream for their uh, Class B motorized lineup, and Dynamax. Dynamax we know yep. from the Do It Yourself Tour. This year, you drove one for almost a month uh, yep. in Integra. So these these are important. So it's important for consumers to look uh, at the dealership when they go to visit the dealership. And to eat. don't be bashful. Ask them how many That's deals yep. awards that they've won. Which which manufacturers are you selling that qualify every year for the DSI awards? Okay. So when people buy their motorhome from their favorite local RV dealership, one of the places that they go to are campgrounds and our friends at KOA, again, another one of our partners in our Do It Now tour, um, have won a very interesting award. It's got nothing to do with campsites and has nothing to do with uh, with uh, programming or um, number of sites or anything like that. It's one of the most profitable franchises. Discuss well, that, Mr. Zagami. It, this is very interesting because this is the first time that they have won this award and recognized for the profitability as one of the best franchises to have. They're the only one in the outdoor industry 
to receive it. And it comes from, I want to say, Franchise Business Review from their 2022 analysis. So it's a big feather in the cap for KOA, which has always had an outstanding marketing team and, and certainly a global presence where people recognize the logo. But now, now it's kind of casting concrete, if you will, that if you're thinking about a franchise, and let's face it, a lot of people that decide to leave their regular work or, or start a franchise, when they start that process, they don't know what they're going to wind up right. with. Right. They don't know if they're going to wind up with mini golf or Jiffy Lube or, you know, some restaurant or, or KOA, but, but yeah. it's important. A list like this becomes very important for a prospective franchisee to look at. I mean, you're going to look at this list and say, they're giving me the top 50 people in the country on franchises. And oh, I like to go camping and oh, KOA is there. Let me, let me investigate KOA. So yeah, it's, it's a quite an honor. And you know, this past summer when we stayed at several KOAs during the Do It Now tour, um, one of the things that I've noticed is that you get a consistency in the campground, whether it's yeah. cleanliness of bathrooms, whether it's quality of the playground for the kids or whatever. But one of the things that a good franchisor does is make every aspect of running that business as simple and as duplicatable as possible. So we want to congratulate our friends at KOA for winning that award. Now, you've bought, you've bought your new RV. You've gone to um, KOA or other great campgrounds around the country. Um, but at some time or another, there might be a service issue with your RV, whether it's towable, whether it's motorized, whether it's with the um, refrigerator, whether it's to do with the air conditioning or something, and it's got to be fixed. And the place you fix it is your dealership or service center. And the key thing today, because as we've been talking about for the past two years, the trajectory of new RV owners is, is at an unbelievable pace. RVTI, the RV Technical Institute, is working with organizations throughout the country to get more people interested in being a tech. Talk about that. Yeah, they uh, a tremendous program with the American School Counselors Association. They're going around to almost every state in the country. Mm -hmm. And we actually participated in the one in Massachusetts uh, earlier this summer where their annual conference was held. And uh, Sherry Fuller from Fuller RV Rentals brought a unit over and spoke to them about rentals and technicians, and and she's going to hire you know more technicians as is most every dealer, but it's it's they've really tapped into something amazing for kids that are in the trade schools that are looking for careers, and and it's been validated with the success of our industry. This is a tremendous career path, and and we are actually introducing what what I love about this program is we are introducing RVs the career path for RV technicians and the RV lifestyle to people that have not spent a lot of time looking at it. Every, every time they go to one of these state conventions, they get as many prospects that to want to one. look right. one and buy one yeah, as they right. do. Wow. I could, I could have a, yeah. a course in my school, trade school or otherwise to train these young students, men and women. It's a great career field for a woman, a man, veterans getting out of the service, retirees that don't want to work full-time. This is a tremendous opportunity. And RVTI has just hit it out of the park with this American School Counselor Program. Right. And it should be pointed out that when we say a career as an RV tech, we don't mean that you're going to spend the next 40 years of your life cleaning out black tanks and gray tanks. I mean, <laughs> you have to learn about that because, you know, whether it's a 45-foot diesel pusher or a pop-up, the tanks are an issue. But you can work your way up into management and uh, ownership. I know I was talking with an RV dealer when I was in Elkhart recently, who said he has a person on his staff right now who started as a lot person, you know, went around moving stuff in his lot. And now his bonus, his bonus last year was several hundred thousand dollars. So um, there's a lot of money in the industry. The industry continues to grow. And uh, it's worth it for people to look into a career starting at that level and, and working to the extent that you want. Now, didn't you on your Do It Now Tour 22, didn't you interview a GM in North Carolina for Campers in RV who started stocking the shelves for yep. parts? And the guy is now the 
the GM of that particular dealership yep. location. Just outside of Charlotte, between Charlotte and Atlanta. Yeah. At the exact town. But there's a person that, that ran right up the ranks. And I'll tell you, with the growth of the industry, this is the time for up-and-comers to get into the business at the ground level because they have no bad habits already. And a lot of manufacturers and a lot of dealers like people that don't come from another dealership because they don't have to untrain and then retrain. So that's another factor. And it, yep. and it doesn't mean you have to be in high school to do this. You can start at any level in your uh, career um, ladder. Absolutely. So those are the stories that are making headlines. And uh, we want to invite you to stay with us. We've got two great segments coming up right here. Where, Bob? On the Camper Report Show. Stay with us, everybody. Mike here from RV Blogger. Don't waste hundreds of dollars on an external GPS for your RV. All you need to do is download the RV Life app right onto your phone. This app is so cool. It has RV GPS built right into it. So you can load all the specific measurements and weights for your RV. It'll give you directions safe for your RV to follow. And by the way, if you have RV Trip Wizard, directions for your trips upload into this GPS automatically. Hey everybody, when you think of quality motorhomes, first name to come to mind is the last name of this gentleman and it's Bob Tiffin. Bob, it's always nice to see you at a show and um, it's nice to know that you have your standard position inside an Allegro bus where these young people can come and say hello to you. Right, young lady? Absolutely. Okay. So, a lot has changed since we talked. Um, you're now a division of a large company, but everything pretty much, from what I'm told, is uh, status quo. Yes, we had not changed anything as planned. It's better. Exactly. Say that Definitely. again. It's better. Okay. It always gets better. Yeah, That's the Tiffin motto. Are you a rela relation? No, I'm, no. A, I'm an owner. I'm an owner. I'm an owner. Okay. I'm That's a very cool. happy owner. That's more important. That's more important. So, you know, quality is um, up there, and production is up there. You've got some new... Class B products, right? We're we building the Class B. We call it the Super C, yes, sir. Oh, the Super C. Ah, I see. Allegro Bay. We resurrected the Allegro Bay name. I saw one of those this summer. Yeah, we have those uh, here in the show, yes. It is quite a um, quite a beautiful unit on a freight liner, I think. It's on a freight liner. Freight liner. Yes, sir. So um, the the C's, the Wayfair is still going strong, and the yeah, we're Allegro building, bus. Yeah, we're building 20, 20 or twenty five of those. I see Wayfarers every every week, yes sir. Every week, and what about um, supply and demand now? Is it still a waiting game, or uh... yes, we're still we're still about eight or ten weeks out on everything we build, yes. Sir. Okay, so we're, ha we're having a great Hershey show. I'll tell you that. When you look at the crowds here today, I mean, I know we've only been open for an hour or so. Uh, it's got to be heartening because Tampa had, you know, major numbers last year, and all the other shows are. Are up. That's right. We have a we have a major crowd here. You know, the best two years we had was we had sixty thousand paid attendees a couple of years ago, right right before we had the COVID. But it's been gr growing momentum every year. And so I feel like this year is going to be. I believe we're going to have seventy thousand paid attendees this year. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, where do you see the growth? Uh, what's the category that you're seeing the biggest demand for? Well, I think we're going to have a lot of growth in the, in the Class C, the Class C business we're building with the, with the Legro, Legro Bay and, and the Legro Freightliner we're building. The big one over here is class, the Class C, you call it, Super, the Super, Super C. C. And I think we're going to have, you're going to see a significant growth in the Class A market this year. We, mm. we have plans, you know, to go up to, go up, could, we could go to 13 a day if we needed to. We're building, we're building 10, 10 a day right now, 40 a week. Now, let me ask you this question. On the Super C's, who does the um, research show is the buyer of that? Are they old Class A people, or are they new people coming in for the first time, or what? Well, it's some of both. I think we have some older folks that want to downsize a little bit and get something they think may be a little easier to drive. But the biggest majority of those are the people that are buying the first time. And we see a lot of a lot of that market coming yeah, up. Yeah, because I bumped into somebody this summer that uh, I saw the product and I interviewed him. He, and I said, well, what did you move from? He said, 
It's my first RV. <laughs> That's right. We see a lot of first-time buyers buying the Super C. That's right. And the Super C is there somewhat easier to drive, it somewhat because of the way the, um, you know, the chassis is set up where you're sitting behind the motor like you would be in a car or a truck. That's right. And it's, it's got the, it's got the realization that the guy that buys that car, buys the motor home, the Super C. He thinks it's smaller because you know he's, it's not as bulky in the front as the, as the Class A. Of course, I. You lose that room up there, so it's 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 a trade-off, I think. Mm. Now the issue with um, you coming to these shows, you face all your customers, and uh, what what do they say to you when they when they find out that you're Bob Tiffin and your name is on the front of the building and the back of the bus? Well, mostly they're glad to see us, and they sometimes somebody says, "Are you still here?" <laughs> I say, "Yeah, I'm going anywhere. I'm not planning on going anywhere. I've got too old to retire, so I'm going to be right here." Okay. So you hit 50 years this year. Yes, sir. Um, when you started out in 1972, the year I got out of college, did you ever think, or as they say down south, would you have ever thunk that 50 years later you'd still be at the top of the game? Well, you know, when we started, I knew that the market was there because Winnebago and some of the other builders, Coastman and some of the other guys were doing a fantastic job building it, even back then. And I knew the market was there. People liked to travel, and the total business was so great. So when we started, I knew that if we could build a good Class A motor home, that we would have owners, and that's exactly what's happening. And it's still going. Still going strong. Still yes, going sir. strong. We want to thank you so much for uh, spending time. We've got a full bus here. Lake and bus, uh, yes, you know what? When you walk in here, you just see, you just see luxury. And uh, yes, you've got a great design team that... You know, you don't you really feel like you're in a house. Well, it is a house. It's a, it's a house on wheels. A house on wheels. <laughs> yes, it's got a big diesel engine, and it's got it's got everything you need. So many people are making the transition from camping to full timing RV, and most everybody wants to go with something like this. That's, yep. I think that's one reason our business is getting better. Interesting that you mentioned that camping. It's a full-time RV, which a lot of people think is one and the same, but it's really not. It's a little different if you do it full-time. You, you, you don't go home every weekend and park. Yep. You stay in the motor in all the time. So that means you got to have the quality to uh, withstand the 24, 365-day use. That's right. So you got to have four slide outs, and you got to have all the room, and you got to have the storage in. you got to have the capacity to do full-time RV. Right. Yes, sir. So we want to thank you so much, and we're going to take some pictures here. And uh, it is my pleasure. I appreciate appreciate you coming by. It's been a while since I've seen you. Thanks so much. Welcome back, everybody, to the Camper Report Show, and I'm delighted to have a good friend, uh, Randy from Pete's RV. That's 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 what we call you, we're Randy Murray, who's going to talk to us today about some winterizing tips and what consumers should look for. Randy, welcome to your first visit on the Camper Report Show, but I'm sure it's not your last. Well, I hope so, Bob, and thank you very much for uh, having me. So tell us a little bit about Pete's RV in general, because we're introducing a new dealership to a lot of people. Uh, you're a major dealer on the East Coast. Tell us about the dealership and, and your role that you play on the service side. So um, Pete's RV is a family owned dealership. Um, we've been around since 1952. Um, the Shepherd family who currently owns it today um, purchased it in 1982. Um, we were a single lot location for most of that. I started with a company back in 1999. I was a technician in the shop. And um, I can't remember exactly when, but the, the boys bought it. The guys I grew up with bought it from the dads. Um, so second generation. And they've really taken it to um, the next level. Um, we're at nine locations now, stemming from home, the flagship in Burlington, Vermont, as you mentioned, and uh, um, over to Cherville, Indiana. Um, so we were um, taking care of some West Coast stuff from that location. Um, Connecticut. So we're right outside of Hartford, Connecticut. 
Um, where I'm sitting currently, I'm just south of Boston, Massachusetts and Plainville, Massachusetts. So we have a location there. Um, we have two locations out in Pennsylvania, right outside of Lancaster and Mountville, Pennsylvania. And then we're down south right on the Delaware border with Keystone RV. Um, we've got uh, South Carolina. So just outside of Charleston, South Carolina, we have a Jayco store there where we do a lot of business with Jayco. Um, and our two recent acquisitions are in Virginia. So right outside of Chesapeake in Salem, Virginia. So we're super excited to bring those guys on board to our, uh, our, our band of misfits and uh, see what we can do with those guys and uh, take care of. <laughs> it's really nice having these locations up and down the East Coast because now we can take care of our customers as a network. Um, and you know, you're never more than a few hours away from one of our locations, which is really cool. Well, and, and I think it's nice too, that, that you're a family owned business and in an era where we see our industry kind of splintering off with five really mega dealers, but then there's a lot of other independents like yourselves that provide unique services and family style services and, and pay attention to the details that people like that. And, and the growth has been phenomenal, but it's been earned through the reputation that you have for excellent service. And you happen to be the director of service. So tell us the, tell us the role that you play, because this is a consumer facing show, but what should consumers know about your service philosophy itself and how you handle that? Well, again, as you mentioned, um, the family owned dealership and, um, Having nine locations, you know, there's some corporate stuff that gets tied into that, but we really, really do push and emphasize the family feel um, to the dealerships, even though we're, we're growing um, uh, like some of the bigger conglomerates out there. Um, and it, not just for our customers, but for our employees as well, um, to give them that a family, um, more of a family feel at work than, uh, than the corporate entity that uh, you can get at some of the other places. Um, what that drives is uh, my bosses are pretty cool. They, they tell me, Randy, do what you feel is right. So I may not have some of the, the 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 rules to follow that may come with some other people in my role at other larger corporations um, where you pretty much are dictated on where the, the channels that you have to live in and you have to figure that out. Where my boss is telling me, Randy, I want you to do what you feel is right. And that's that's how we kind of operate, especially when it comes to our our customer base. Um, everybody's been really busy for the last couple of years. So we do the best we can. We, we really try to uh, take care of the customer the way that we, we would want to be taken care of. Sometimes the industry um, doesn't help that uh, the best that uh, they could. Um, but, but we, we do try our best and we do really try to do a really good job for the customer um, and educate, not only um, educate so they can help themselves, um, but give them the resources where they can find the information for themselves if they, they need those as well. Yeah. I want, I wanted you on, Randy, because one of the things that uh, I know I work with you closely up here in the Northeast when we do seminars at the consumer shows, and, and we talk a lot about winterizing. And I think some people, if they're down south or out west, they may think that winterizing isn't something that applies to them. But let's talk about some of the things that are most important as we start to, in many areas of the country, get outside the, the typical camping season. Or we may find that... Uh, people are driving into the Northeast or they're so, so they should get winterized or they're in the Northeast and it's winterized and they drive out to go to Florida or what have you. Uh, talk to us about winterizing and the importance of it in the RV consumer's life. Sure. Sure. So first of all, for those of you that don't know, Bob and I do seminars all over the Northeast um, throughout the winter months at RV shows and going to Bob's seminars are really cool. He's really, uh, he's ingenuitive and very, he explains things very well. And it's a lot of fun to see Bob's seminars. So I really enjoy going to those. So if you don't know that, check out one of Bob's seminars. <laughs> um, winterizing in the Northeast, um, it gets cold. Anywhere it gets cold, if you are an RVer, you need to take some provisions to protect your, your RV and not only just the plumbing system, um, but it, your RV is going to sit in one location for a long period of time, poten potentially with snow on it, right? Um, it, it, it's going to be in cold, warm, all sorts of different weathers. Um, rodents are a real thing that we need to think of if our RV is parked uh, in, in certain locations. Um, and so you need, as a, as a RVer or someone that owns an RV, especially with lots of new people in our industry um, in the last couple of years due to COVID, um, you need to educate yourself on what to do. And, and some people do and some people don't. Some people really overthink it. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's they usually overthink everything. Um, I'm a pretty simple guy, so I like the common sense goes a long way. 
Um, if I know my RV is going to be in cold weather, I need to displace um, the, the water in that water system, the RV's water air plumbing system with non-toxic antifreeze. We need to pump in um, a glycol um, or um, an alcohol based, which I don't recommend antifreeze to protect our system to again, displace that water. So um, things don't freeze. Our plumbing systems are made of plastic. All our, our outlets, all our receptacles, like faucets and things like that, all plastic. Um, the toilet valve, plastic, all the plumbing is plastic. So um, if we don't displace uh, this water with non-toxic antifreeze, we are going to have issues. Um, if you are traveling in and out of a cold climate, say like a snowbird coming out of uh, the New England region heading to Florida, um, chances are they, they are going to go back to New England um, where the weather is still cold. They may not be able to you know come back in for warmer weather. So they may need to um, winterize their coach as they come out of the warmer weather. <clears throat> Excuse me and come back home to New England. So you'll need to be able to know how to winterize your coach on, on the fly. I, I would recommend that. Um, if you own a coach or you don't have the capabilities or maybe you're just not mechanically inclined. I know, Bob, you joke about that once in a while. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, maybe, you know, make sure you have somebody in line to go to a guy like me along the way. Um, our stores all the way down to South Carolina um, in Virginia. I have antifreeze at every one of those stores. Um, it does get a little bit cold there, and we want to make sure that we can winterize on the fly if we have to. So make sure you know where you're going. Keep an eye on the temperature. You may get lucky. <clears throat> you may be able to cheat it by running the heat until you get home, keeping the RV plugged in, and then taking care of it a day later. So um, it all depends on your skill set. But knowledge, knowledge is everything. Because if you don't know what is coming ahead or you don't know what you need to do, then you can't make the determinations on how you're going to do so, right? Um, so really, educate yourself on what you need to do first. We've, we've got the situation, uh, and it's true of, of most of the things that we have to do with our RVs, where you can go to a dealer, or in the case of winterizing, a lot of people do it themselves. If somebody's doing it themselves, what's, what tips do you have for them? Because we all know that there's a ton of stuff on the internet and a lot of it just isn't true. People, you know, they, they look at social media and say, well, it, I saw it on the internet. Well, you know, we joke about that. We, we talk about that at all of our seminars. So somebody sitting out there says, I, I can do my winterizing. What, what tips do you have for somebody that wants to take on that challenge themselves? And, I, and, you're, and you're right. I don't do that. I, I call you up and <laughs> call somebody. Somebody else does my end. Well, so that just means you're a smart man, Bob. So you know that you can't do it, so you don't attempt it. It's the guys that don't understand that <laughs> or haven't grasped that that um yet or the ones that are a little bit difficult. No, I, I welcome people to do things like that because I, I like to be – I'm from Vermont. I'm from northern Vermont. As a northern Vermonter, um, we were bred to be self-sufficient. We we didn't have the money we, or the wherewithal or there just wasn't the resource. So we had to figure out how to do it ourselves. So I really welcome that. And I, I spent a lot of my time helping people with that process, um, whether it be winterization or a spot seal or check a wheel bearing or whatever, whatever it may be. I like to educate or help people educate so they can help themselves um, on the Internet. What do you mean that the things are not real on the Internet are true? <laughs> um, I look for consistencies. Um, so if I see one thing on the Internet that is interesting to me or, uh, you know, is something that I'm looking for. I'm probably going to look for something else so I can I can uh, compile data. If I'm seeing two or three things that are very similar um, being reported on the internet or a certain way to do things, I'm going to say, well, they've got three guys doing it that uh, look like they know what they're doing. I'm probably going to go with the, the roll the dice on that one and say that these guys are correct. If I see one guy and my common sense meter is going, this doesn't sound right, <laughs> that's probably going to be a red flag, and I'm going to I'm going to keep strolling, as they would say, right? Um, if someone doing it on their own, make sure that you've got enough product. Um, most systems can be done with a small amount of product, i.e. a couple gallons, two to three gallons. Um, but if you're new to it um, or you're not sure, make sure that you've educated yourself on how much product you need, i.e. antifreeze. Because in the middle of the job, if you run out and it's not readily available, then that, that's going to slow down your process and maybe hinder you. Um, if you don't get right back to it, you may miss something because you've, you've not completed the process fluidly. Um, so speak, speak enough product about, would be a big deal there. Yeah, you know, speaking about that, and the, the plus side of that is, fortunately, there are things on the Internet that are very real from experts who know what they're doing. And you, you have a YouTube channel that now is up 
six or seven million views because you often get questions at your seminars. Well, this was great, but that may be the first time that they've met you. And then you have put a lot of videos. Talk about the importance of your videos on the YouTube channel as an extension of your relationship with your customers and people who might not know who Pete's RV is. Sure. So it blows my mind. Uh, many, many years ago, 2001-ish, I think, um, we got a gentleman come up to me, a new marketing guy, and his name was Phil LeClaire. And he's like, Randy, let's shoot a video. And we like, what are we going to shoot it on? And he's like, I don't know. Let's just make it up. So we did. <laughs> and we and YouTube had just come out and we started posting this stuff. And it really blew up into something that we couldn't imagine. And what it was, was it was not only people that we were sending there because of the relationship with me or Pete's RV, um, but it was um, people looking for quest answers to questions um, about RVing. And most of the, the videos that we would make, we kind of the thought process we put into them was, what are some of the questions am I taking at the service counter? What are people calling in and asking how to do or what to do? Um, what, those are the questions that we want to answer. And YouTube has morphed into more where people don't go to the owner's manual anymore. Like they'll buy something brand new and like it comes with an owner's manual. It comes with a QR code or something that you can go to. No one looks at that anymore at all. Um, they immediately go to YouTube and look for a guy like me to tell them how to do it. Or they're calling the place they bought it from and expecting someone behind a counter to relay them on how to do it. They won't open an owner's manual. And I, I, I find that kind of um, <clears throat> amusing, but it's reality. So now as a, a, someone that wants to educate, um, this YouTube channel is awesome. Um, and we, what we'll do is we will direct people there for good information. And the wonderful thing about YouTube is everybody knows it's used it. You can start and stop it. You can replay over and over. You can rewind so you can see what someone's doing. So there's a lot of value to that where it's really hard to do that when I'm on the phone with you trying to tell you step-by-step -step process. You have a visual and you can start and stop and you have both hands available to you. So yeah. <laughs> um, we, I don't say, I don't want to say we've capitalized on it. Um, but we were we started doing things that really were important to people that we didn't even realize how important that was. And and we we like providing that information. So we're we're utilizing YouTube just like the people that are going to it to provide information. Sure. You know, uh, I've got we're running short on time. Got a couple minutes left. Yeah. But so let's let's do a, a, a lightning round, if you will, because uh, yes. a couple of things that are important to consumers is do they cover it or not cover their RV? Mouse proofing and the importance of roof uh, roof maintenance. So, but but we have to do those in the, in the shortened version, which is difficult for you and I. But it, it is, it is. So, short version: cover your RV if you can swing the cost of a cover. A cover will cost you five to seven hundred dollars. Cover it. Anything that is covered is going to be better than something that's uncovered. Mouse proofing your RV. Bounce dryer sheets are not going to cut it. If you're got, if you're trying to protect your stuff on the floor level from mice with your bounce dryer seats, they're already in your camper. You've let them in, damage is already done. You need to not let them in. Um, and what was the third one, Bob? Roof, uh, roof, cover your roof, your roof. So roof spot seals should be done twice a year from the time that you get that coach to the time that you don't have that coach anymore. I, under warranty and not under warranty. Visually inspect your roof seals twice a year and address them if necessary. And you won't have a leaky roof. That's the bullet. <laughs> That's the okay. lightning round. How's that? That, that's fantastic. Our guest this morning has been Randy Murray, Director of Service at Pete's RVs, who are a, a very large regional player in our industry in Connecticut, Vermont, Massachusetts, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and all the way down to South Carolina. And uh, I know these guys, they're not done yet. Randy, I want to thank you very, very much for squeezing me into your schedule today. Oh, and uh, we'll, we'll, have you, we'll have you back again on the Camp Report Show now that we've introduce you to the rest of the country. I look forward to it, Bob, and thank you for having me. We really appreciate you, sir. All right. Thanks, Randy.